Farewell to Manzanar, the powerful true story of a life inside a Japanese-American internment camp. This is a shortened summary of Farewell to Manzanar. Before we start this summary, I just want to make sure that everyone is 100% clear on a basic fact. Manzanar was just a place where the American government set up a camp where they forced thousands of Japanese Americans to go during World War II. They did this because America was at war with Japan, and they were afraid that Japanese Americans or Japanese immigrants might rise up and fight against America or try to sabotage or to try to undo the American military efforts in the area. The, so they were forced to go to Manzanar and other camps. Jean Wakutsky and her family are forced to go to this camp just for being Japanese. This was not a place they wanted to go. This was not a good place to be. Um, this was, and basically internment means like in prison during war. Okay, so this is, wanted to make sure that everyone's 100% clear on that basic structure here of what Manzanar was. With that, let's start at the beginning of Jean's story and walk through Farewell to Manzanar. At the beginning of, chat, of Farewell to Manzanar, we learn that Jean's family are immigrants from Japan. Her father's a fisherman, and one day a man runs by the dock as her, as her father's going out to boats. The Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Having found this out, Jean's father anticipated, he expected there to be a there to be anger and fear of Japanese people in America. So he wanted to distance themselves from Japan as much as possible. So he burns the Japanese flag, their documents, and anything else that shows that they have a connection to Japan. Yet even still, after a, after a short period of time, the FBI arrests Jean's father. Her father shows dignity when he's arrested and he leaves without putting up any fight. Jean and the Wakatsuki family, after a short period of time where they move, move around a little bit, trying to keep a low profile, they eventually, along with all the other Japanese, um, Japanese Americans in the area in California, are gathered up and they're forced to get on a, great, a, a bus to go to one of the camps. And they arrive, Jean and her family arrive at Manzanar, just as dinner time is starting. The food was terrible and the buildings were completely unfinished. Jean's mother is really worried about the dirty living conditions, but her brother Woody is determined to make it better. They start trying to fix things up. But the living conditions were really difficult because there were holes in the floor, holes in the walls, so dust keeps coming in. So much so that, Woody, uh, that their mom says, Woody, we can't live like this. Animals live like this. But Woody's determined to try to make it better. Not only was the food terrible, but they were often, or and because of that, they were often sick to their stomach. And the toilets were completely disgusting as they kept overflowing with too many people using them. So it made it even worse. Conditions were just not nice. To make that worse as well, Jean's family starts to become less connected because they're not eating together anymore. They're not having those positive connections with one another. And so they're really affected uh, as a family by not being as close. In, in contrast to those that experience of becoming less close, Jean remembers what their family used to be like with great memories of fishing and eating food together, and she knows that those things just aren't going to be happening anymore. After, month, after nine months of being imprisoned, Papa finally returns to them at Manzanar, but he was not physically or mentally the same after returning. No one in the family was sure how to act when Papa gets back. People in the camp said terrible rumors and terrible things about Papa and expecting that he was a, an, uh, an American spy since he had been released from prison earlier. He, Papa couldn't handle this and he starts drinking more and not going out to see other people. One night, Papa was drunk and threatening Jean's mother. Her brother, Kayo, defended their mother and ended up punching their father in the face. Jean is terribly sad watching their father their father really have a downfall since returning from being wrongfully imprisoned. And so she's just kind of seeing him unravel. 
One day, Jean's brother-in-law is working outside of the American camps, and they have permission to be there. But even still, a group of soldiers wakes them up and threatens them for working outside of the camp, forces them against the wall at gunpoint. So we just continue to see the stressful things that Jean and her family are forced to go through because of this racism against Japanese Americans. Moving forward, Jean's brother Woody and her father have a disagreement about whether or not Woody should join the uh, should enlist to join the war. Um, Woody does end up decide goes against their father and decides to enlist in the war. After two and a half years in the internment camp, um, multiple Japanese Americans challenge the government for this illegal internment or imprisonment. It's not legal to just take someone from their home and force them into a prison for no reason, right? With no, no thing that they've done wrong. So the courts finally acknowledge that this is against the law and that they can't do this anymore. So the internment camps were finally, finally going to be closing and Jean and her family would be able to leave Manzanar. So after leaving Manzanar, we skip forward and Jean shows up for her first day in seventh grade. The teacher asked her to read, and after she finished reading, a girl said, Gee, I didn't know you could speak English. Jean starts to feel like even though she's left Manzanar, she still is not going to be welcome or really known as a person, that she's going to be an outsider just because she's a Japanese American. She starts to want to be more invisible and just kind of stay out of the, stay out of the light so that she won't be seen. And she continues as she grows up in her adolescence and her teenage years, she continues to struggle between wanting to be invisible versus just trying to find her place among friends and school and just to be a normal, normal person, right? Who's not seen for her race or her ethnicity, but is just her. And she ends up joining the marching band with a friend. And she had some really experiences as she continues to try to find her, some really positive experiences as she continues to try to find her place. Now, as an adult, uh, we skip forward into chapter 22. As an adult, Jean begins to think back to her experience at Manzanar and begin to really process what that time meant and begins to talk about it with other people. Jean decided now that she's an adult and has a family of her own with three children, she decides to take her family back to Manzanar to see the place where she had this terrible experience in the past. As Jean and her family now approach Manzanar, she can hear this, the voices of people who live there in the, in the past speaking to her and feels a connection to this place and those people. As she's visiting, she starts to think about what she identifies kind of as the Manzanar mentality, that the, the idea that because she was of Japanese heritage that she wasn't welcome or wouldn't have a place in America, that she... Um, that she simply was trying to kind of erase those experiences and erase part of who she was. But now after visiting Manzanar, Jean was able to see Manzanar and that mindset of not belonging that it created, able to see that for what it was and say to it, farewell.